Hi everybody, this week we're going to talk about one of the Canterbury Tales in the larger group of texts uh, be called the Miller's Tale. Uh, it's important to remember that the Miller is presented as one of the working class people on the trip. He is dishonest, he runs a mill, but there's some questions about his character, particularly because as Chaucer describes him in the prologue, he's a drunk. And, and even in presenting his tale, the text starts with the knight's tale, and then the miller steps in and says, I'll give you a tale. You know, the knight's tale is about chivalry and courtly love. And the miller comes in and says, hang on a minute, maybe not so much. So as we're unpacking this, keep in mind that the character of the miller is telling this tale. And you can think about whether or not it's a giant farce, if it's just sort of this big joke, if Chaucer's just writing in different genres to see what kind of author he could be, or if there's some kind of point behind this. If, is Chaucer making some sort of conscious commentary on the way that the love is described in the literature of his time and just in the general culture? So think about those ideas as you're working through these texts, and this text in particular. And, but it's something that will expand as we go on and we start getting into more satirical texts as we look at some of the things that Shakespeare and Marlowe do uh, and other writers going forward. So uh, I wanted to uh, take a look at a couple of the things going on with this text and some questions I wanted you to ask. So it centers on four main characters. You have John, uh, who is a carpenter, seems to be kind of a hardworking man respected in the community, but he's older and he has married a younger wife. And one of John's biggest concerns is, is my younger wife going to cheat on me? And so you hear him let out the fear that he's going to be considered a coupled. Now coupled is a person whose wife has committed adultery on him in this case. And it would have been a, a very embarrassing thing for John to be known as. And so when you're thinking about the love relationship between these two people, um, is it one where John truly loves his wife and wants her to be faithful, or is it because he fears being called a cuckold and he treats her like his possession? So think about that as you unpack this. Allison, uh, in her own right, is uh, very attached to Nicholas, who's staying with the family. He is a scholar, uh, both of, uh, of you know, religious works, but also astrology, and the text says that he really has turned into studying astrology, and uh, he is an expert in this field, according to John, and he, that gives him the space to create his trick that he's going to play. Um, and so this relationship is one that is outside of marriage. His treatment of Allison is one that is not uh, a way that we would think about wooing in these days. Um, he kind of uh, says to her, love me or I'll die. And it was pretty aggressive in his approach to it. And finally, you have Absalom here in town who uh, is also attracted to Allison and wants to prove his love to her in a more courtly fashion. Uh, but then again, she's married. So how do we reconcile all of these things? Well, um, the story, as you, uh, as you will understand, will unpack why each of these characters brings a different perspective to the table and why each one of them get into the trouble uh, that they and find themselves in throughout the text. And so I don't want to just summarize the text here. I expect that you'll read it, but as you think about it, just kind of be willing to look at it beyond the surface a little bit, like we talked about with Chaucer's uh, prologue last week of looking at it a bit from the side and seeing uh, maybe things aren't as they seem or maybe Chaucer's looking at something deeper in what he's writing here. Uh, the big ideas that I want you to think about, like up until this point of reading Chaucer, it's been pretty clear who the heroes and villains are. And a lot of you talked about that in your writing about Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, uh, how that's a different version of a villain than what we've seen in Beowulf. Um, but I wonder if there's any way that we could distinguish it between them here. Are there any heroes? Are there any characters that we can truly get behind? Or are they all somehow kind of flawed? And if they are all some kind of, somehow kind of flawed, what might Chaucer be saying about the human condition through this tale, right? Is it more honest because of that? 
also uh, this idea of courtly love. Yeah, we have Absalom attempting some wooing to begin with and, and sort of approaching this now I mean, a married woman uh, to woo her. What Nicholas does is certainly not in that vein. And even the way that John loves Allison, is that the type of love that we see as champion, as respectful, uh, as endearing? Or is it some sort of gross uh, variation of it? And again, like we with the first question, is there some way that Chaucer might be making uh, commentary on the idea of love through that? And one of the questions that's always persisted for me and for anyone reading this text is, should we feel sorry for John? You know, he ends up being on the butt of the joke, uh, pun uh, intended in that one, and you'll see why if you have, as you read the text. Um, but he ends up being the sort of guy that everybody's laughing at at the end. Um, is he a victim? Is he uh, somehow responsible for his own problems? Is it a little bit of both? I want to see what you think about that. And then, you know, as we talked about earlier, is there a moral to the story? The, the miller throws one on at the end, but I'm not really sure we should take him seriously. But do you think that Chaucer uh, is trying to make some kind of argument here? If so, then explore that idea a little bit. Think beyond, uh, as, as you're writing your post, what is that central idea that you want to present? Scale back on the summary a little bit and scale more up to what the lines in the text show you. Using those quotes as examples helps you dig deeply into the text. Summary keeps you kind of very shallow. And I want to see what you're doing with the work rather than whether or not you know it. It's a different type of assessment here, but it is the type of assessment that you're going to be doing in writing throughout the rest of your college career. So I hope this video is helpful in kind of giving you some guidance on this text. As always, feel free uh, to email me with any questions or concerns. Like last week, the text is printed here in the Middle English, so give yourself some time to read through it, understand it, say it out loud. A lot of times the words will make sense in that context. So uh, let me know if I can help in any way. Thank you.